Hey, this is Robbie for Taking Your Photography. Uh, prepping for my birthday party here at my mom's house. And I think I'm going to do a time-lapse video of this. So I have my GoPro set on a tripod here. It's really locked down so it won't move. The next step, I'll turn it on and I'll have it take one photo every two seconds. So that should uh, produce a pretty nice, pretty fluid uh, time-lapse video. And with a GoPro, this is an HD Hero 2, I think the battery will last about three hours-ish, taking a picture every two hours, or every two seconds. Then we'll take them into Lightroom and we'll process the images and then export them and I'll show you how to turn it into a video clip using Premiere. So I'll turn this on as soon as some people start showing up and then we'll go back into the computer and I'll show you the next steps. So now after the party, I just imported all of the pictures and I realized I kind of blundered big time. I forgot to format the card in my GoPro before I began the time lapse, so it ran out of space before the battery died. So, <laughs> time lapse 101, make sure your card is empty. But still, in any case, I got 3,439 images. So this should still work for a pretty good time lapse. I started it a little earlier than I had anticipated. I was hoping it would run until nighttime so I could see the transition from day to night, but we didn't quite get that far. But this will work. So the first thing to do, or the first thing that I tend to do, is go into Lightroom and I'll edit one of these shots. This is kind of a baseline for the day. So it's half in the daylight, half in the shade. So I'll do some adjustments here. And we'll try and get as much color information out of this as we can because we have to accommodate for the change in time. So that should work pretty well for after. So that will give us some more color or more information in the blown out areas because I have recovery on all the way. And it should push up some of the shadows. So it should maintain a pretty consistent image. These settings should work pretty well throughout the entire range. And now since we're going to be using this for a time lapse, which will be 1080p video, we will want to crop these. So then when we export, they will be the right resolution and it'll just be easier. So crop, I've created a custom uh, crop ratio here. So 16 by 9 is what we want and something like that. We don't need as much of this boring roof and that will work. All right, perfect. So now we want to select all of our images. So you go down to the uh, film strip down here, press control A, which highlights everything and then control shift S and then we'll synchronize these settings across all of our images. And now that we have all of our images in sync settings wise, we'll select them all again, control A and we'll begin the export process. So we'll export these at 1920. And because they're in the correct aspect ratio, it should automatically put the other edge at 1080. And then we don't really need much post-processing. We don't need a watermark. want to export these uh, as fast as possible because <laughs> there's three and a half thousand of them. And then we'll choose our folder and we'll begin the export process. So I had a folder specifically for this and we'll begin. All right, so now I've created a new project in Adobe Premiere Pro. This is where we're going to create our actual time lapse. So what you need to do to create a new time lapse is right click on your project area and say import. Then find the folder that your time lapse is in click on the first one and then this image sequence if you check the checkbox and say open then voila you'll automatically have a time lapse that contains all the images in that folder it's that easy and then you can drag it onto your timeline and you have a time lapse put together this is saying it's about 2 minutes and 22 seconds and it's at 24 frames per second but what happens if 2 minutes and 24 seconds is too long for this time lapse and we want 60 frames a second? Well, you can do that also. And we'll nuke this guy from our timeline. The import settings, oddly enough, you can't control them from here. 
if you want to change the frame rate at which they're imported, it's a kind of a premiere level change. So you have to go into the main preferences. And I think it's playback. Nope, it is media. And the intermediate media time base, whatever the hell that means, that's what does it. So if we change this now to 60 frames per second and say OK, we'll do the exact same import. Select the first image, image sequence, OK. And now where this was imported at 60 frames a second, and instead of being 2 minutes and 23 seconds, it's 57 seconds. That's much better. So we can drop that onto our timeline and watch it again. You can press spacebar and watch it at any point in time and you kind of get an idea of how this works. It's really that easy in Premiere. So I just wish I had my GoPro going the entire time so we would have been able to see the transition to night and see how the GoPro's ISO worked at night with a time lapse, but this is okay. I mean, the party was barely getting started by the time this uh, ended, so I wish we had a little bit more footage, but other than that, I think this all worked out. So I hope you found this somewhat useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll leave this boring time lapse going at the end of this for another minute. Thank you. Bye.